G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Today I'm gonna to show you beginners and advanced beginners how to paint a beautiful water landscape scene with some beautiful elements in it that make up a wonderful painting. I first wanna get the size of my canvas up on the screen there and we'll get the colors going up the screen what I'm using in this video. Now I wanna bring you over here while that's happening and show you exactly what I've laid out and how it's gonna happen because you've seen the picture in the opening credits, that's the painting finished, all right? But I've gotta paint it now to get to that stage. So come on over here and let's get right into it, eh? Now I've got me horizon line above halfway okay that's because we're quite low down in this picture now look where all the elements are they're not sitting on top of the horizon line where sometimes we can get caught just putting them right on top this one's a bit closer so it's down past the horizon line and i'm not going to do a flat line here because it's closer it's kind of curved okay and this is a bank a grassy bank and there's another block of land out here with some trees on it and over here is some distant hills or mountain or whatever like that and down here I'm just going to have some elements nice big tree in the mid ground there with some reflective elements in the water and hopefully we'll get some submerged rocks in the water as well now I want to show you the trick to a painting an easy sky. See that clear stuff there? That's retarder. It's a medium that slows down the drying time of the acrylic paint. And this is just a soft bodied titanium white. I just simply call it craft white. Now I want to mix that with the retarder. So there's my sky area. I'm simply going to grab this and I love this brush because it's nice and big and it don't muck around. And I want to get this in the sky area. So I've got that pretty much, and being aware where I want sky windows, you know, the sky peeking through the trees, I want to also get that area done. Now with this brush, I simply stroke it left and right like a pure gentleman, look at that. And we've got that, this is a prime canvas. We've got the canvas already prepared, ready for a wonderful sky. Now I've got some Conacridone Magenta, I've got some Midtone Grey. I've got it in a tube, saves me mixing it up, but if you don't have it in a tube, you can just mix up different values of greys and keep them in a container. And I wanna use Cerulean Blue. Now this is gonna be a simple, effective, realistic looking sky, and that's why I'm using these colors. And I wanna show you a beginner just how you can do this. So I've got the blue onto me, put it on a brush, and I'll start at the top. Just push it into the canvas push it in. Now I want to come down to the horizon line and I want it, get the ends done, I want it to come a little bit pale as we get down to the horizon line, okay? Because that creates the sphere in the sky. Get down there to our water line because we're going to see sky there. Now it's looking all liney and whatnot. Just get your brush, you're the artist, manipulate those angles and brush strokes and paint to where you want it. Now I'll go back to the tip and stroke it left and right. Now getting to the grey and the magenta, I want to pull the grey where I want it onto my brush. Okay, I've got it all loaded in there. Now I'm going to start adding some of this magenta. I don't want too much. I just want that polluted vibe of a colour in the sky. There we go. Now that does look a bit too much. I overdone it. Always had the lighter colour sorry always add the darker color to your lighter value so now i'll get this over here that was just too dark you want it gray but just with a hint of that magenta so see i made a mistake so what was already in my brush was enough to give it the vibe i want you can see the two differences now and all along the bottom of my sky i want this color just residenting in the sky making its residence there and just bring it up and I just want to fade it into the blue so we have a beautiful transition of the two colors. Somewhere there, and all dark down there. Okay, and it's that easy. Now we'll put in a few clouds. That paint is still wet and retarded. We're ready to take on some clouds. See that vibe now, if you look at it long enough, you'll realize what I was on about, how you got those colors in your sky. I see him here where I live a lot. Um, I'm liking the fact that I've got water in this painting. So what I might do before I do the clouds is put a bit of a 
Clary, son, I just want to do this. I love this element. It's an, ad it's an additive that adds value, in my opinion, to your painting. So I want it about here. But I'm just going to push it in. Because in hindsight, it's going to come down the water there like that. And it's just going to add some wonderful bullshit effect to your painting. Now, I've put that on there with my finger. Find yourself a little scrumbly brush. I have this one. It started out life as a flat, but over time it got munted up and it's like a little blending brush now. And I simply just want to clear this into the sky. I'll get, pull some of that heavy stuff back into the actual glare there. Now this can either be the glare of the moon or the sun. It doesn't matter. It's a glare in the sky. You get those days over here where you just don't know what it is. Is it the sun today or is it the moon? But I want to Feather that out into the blue there, just like that. There we go. And now I'm just going to get a little bit more white on the tip of there like that and concentrate in the guts of it right there like that. Get it on there. Stop. Wipe my brush on a towel and then vibe that up again. Vibe it up. Okay, that's nice. And like I did in the other one, I've just put some more paint in the brush but I'm pulling it away, getting it rather not muchish on there-ish. And let's see if we can... get a glare there. I just like doing this. All right, I'll do it like that, boom. That'll do. I've buggered up the, the, the inside of the sun slash moon, so I'll have to fix it up. There we go. Now cloud time. My favorite go-to brushes is my blending brush that I use. Message me on Facebook if you want me to send you out some of those. And a fan brush. So I'll pick up this titanium white out of the tube now. It's thicker than this earlier white that I used the retarder with. And I'll just simply, let's say, grab some of this and make a dirty white. A dirty, filthy white. Where would you want some clouds? I'm not sure. Let's just put something dancing along here. We're going to have a mountain there, aren't we? Where are we? I don't want to go too low, so I'll bring that up a bit, sorry. Something here. I'm just making the footprint. The top edge is what I'm designing, and the bottom bit, see here, it's got all open bits in it. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to just keep coming and coming and coming along here. That's what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. Now I want to show you and explain to you why I shaped the cloud like that. Okay, I've got the top. That's what I was concentrating on, okay? Now down here I've got openings of the sky. I need that to create brighter and less brighter values in the body of the cloud when I blend it. So using the corner of my blending brush and you need a cloth. I use a Chuck's Kitchen cloth, they're the best. Now I'll start over here and I'm going to dance the top, concentrate on the top, just very lightly touching it. I'm giving it bugger all pressure. Now I'm going to start coming down, but before I do, look what's on my brush. I don't know if you can see that. That's where you've got to wipe it and control. See this stuff here now? I want to smear that and we've got those windows that I talked about, they're creating brighter and duller values within your cloud. And you will see these are going to be, let's just fluff that right up at the end there. And we're going to do that pretty much all the way along. This is a simple way to paint absolute bullshit clouds in your acrylic paints. Most oil artists are lucky they get to do this in their paintings, but doing it this way with acrylics gives you the ability to make it look smooth, creamy, crispy. I don't know that, you know what I'm trying to say anyway. Now I know I've got a lot of paint on there. Again, I'm gonna wipe that. It's gonna be a mountain there, so I might disturb that up into the sky a bit there. Push it around. Keeping the top, don't destroy the top. Get rid of any ugly bits you don't want. Now I'm gonna show you, see the windows that I left in there, those opened areas? they've allowed lighter and brighter values within those clouds. Look how easy that was. Now I'm gonna grab some more of that white. I want a bit more of this color in it because it doesn't seem to, there we 
go. And we'll simply get something here. So I'm just going to, now I'm creating the top of the cloud. I've got to be careful not to make too many cone peaks like that. So I'm going to distort that into a roundish pillowy bit like that. Now look at that, how it's a big solid blob. I don't want to get caught doing that like I did over here. I want to create windows within it. There we go, look at that. So many ways you can paint clouds. Every time I paint a cloud, I'm learning something. And I'm gonna bring this in front of that stuff there like so. There's my cloud. See what I've done? I've got more sky windows within it, so when I blend it, it's gonna create a 3D effect. Get that down there. Dance the tops a bit. Just get rid of the strokes that I'm not happy with at the top till it's right. There we go. Nice and soft. Wipe your brush. See the harsh white there? You can even leave that. That's just bits of the light hitting it. Okay. And if you can learn to keep putting open windows within your cloud footprint before you blend it, you'll and practice blending those, you'll realize you'll get a lot better cloud looking in the sky like that. Now I just want to simply this bit here is going to be open up, so I simply want to get something in front of that now. So I'm going to come along. This is a bit more grey, making the body of it, the top of it, down there somewhere. Remember where your land is. Don't get lost because it's going to be covered up with your land or something. Put something there and I'll get that back in front there like I was talking about. And I might just get something in front of that there. That'll do. Now here I want to, I know this bit's going to be open, so I'll pull that down to the horizon line there. I'll drag that. When you drag, make sure they're completely left and right. They just look better in the paint for a painting sake. Even though you might see in a sky a crooked drag, sometimes when you're painting a painting, you've got to change it to make it look pleasing to the eye, because if you follow something exact, and someone's looking at your painting it can look a bit wrong. So I sometimes change it up just so it's pleasing to the eye. There we go, we've got some decent clouds in our sky there. Now just to finish it off, grabbing some of the actual pure white that's got nothing in it, that the pure white out of the tube, will add some yumminess, work it out. Well, there's our glary sun. Let's put a bit of that in front there like that. Uh, let's put something, say, here. This adds the actual 3D dimension to your clouds when you, when you do this here. I'm just looking in there. I could see here needs a bit of light hitting it there. Uh, a bit here. And uh, where else? And maybe a bit. See here, I'll, I'll three-dimensionalize this bit here. Get something in there, add some yumminess. That'll do. Don't overdo it. You can overdo it and turn it into snot. Now I'm gonna leave that harshness of the white there, but just softly kiss it down into the cloud body. Over here as well. Leaving the, I'm leaving the top of it there, the top half of that brightness and pushing the bottom half into the cloud. But very lightly, you've got to practice the pressure. You might think, oh, he's just brushing it like that. But you've got to realise, okay, what pressure is he brushing it at? Okay, so there's our yumminess. As you can see, the difference that has done. And you can get a vibe of that grey and magenta that I put in the sky, how it's sort of given that polluted distance. I mean, we can go to town and put some Cirrus clouds here looking like they're coming over their heads, but I'm filming a video and I don't want to have you bored saying, come on, get on with the next bit. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get on with the next bit. This can be dried now. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get me horizon area and I'm going to get that craft paint, prime this up. I'll do it while I'm telling you because I don't want to tell you what I'm going to do and spend half an hour telling you what I'm doing and then to get into it. So I'm going to prime that up. Uh, I'll come around here. This is roughly where I want it and up to about there somewhere. Get all this. Now this doesn't have to be wet open as long as the sky because this is just dragged through colours. But I put this white here, the craft white and retarder, because it helps move the 
sky colours within our reflective water. So I'll get this left and right, get it on there until I'm happy. Now the sky colours I used, I gave him a spray with water because I still need them. So I'm gonna first grab the cerulean blue, pretty much from this side here, and then just let it go into nothing, lighter and lighter, because when you get the lighter value of the water at the top, it looks like it's laying flat instead of like that. It just gives that vibe. Now I'm gonna mess with it until I get that vibe happening. Now I'm gonna simply clean the brush, pick up some of this mishmash of a gray color there with there, somewhere out here. This is the water, there we go. I'm gonna grab a bit of the magenta -y gray color that just to get some of this bit, there we go. Just about there, that's good enough. Just good left and right strokes is all you need. Now to, the simplest way to get all this busy nonsense in the water is we'll grab the white, which is here. I'll slightly mix it with a bit of the gray and simply get it on the edge of your putter on a brush or whatever brush you're using. Simply look at your painting here, 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 like so and you want to just kind of there with windows in it with windows in it down there with windows in it and into some of this there that's it now wipe the living buggery out of this put it on a brush otherwise you can destroy your water and now i want to go just left and right like that that easy it's simple. Once you're a seasoned artist and you know what you're doing, you can detail this more, but I'm just getting you to that point. Now I've got myself a flat brush. I'll start with the distant mountain there. We want that kind of um, distorted with atmosphere. So it's gonna be green, but it's gonna be a paler green, but we need some of the sky atmosphere in there. So I'm just gonna dampen my brush first with some dehydrated water. I'll get the green. Now this is just forest green. Look at that, it's quite loud, thick and heavy. So I'm gonna grab some of the white and then lighten it up. Now my sky color is here, so I'm gonna grab some of that, okay? And a little bit of the red magenta. Get a bit more of that. There we go. I've got that vibe going. Grab that a little bit lighter, so I'm grabbing a bit more white. Now why I'm using a flat is this is pretty much sitting, it's gonna to come to about there. This is pretty much sitting on the horizon line, so I'll use my bullshit stick actually because I can get a straighter line. Uh, so I'll rest it onto my bullshit stick and I just come across here, the level I want, there we go. Boom, about there. I want some of the edge of the painting left open. That's it. Uh, I'll get the shape of it where I want first. So I want it to, there's my cloud, so I'll get the shape of it coming up and down and around like this, getting ready to come around to that shape there. There we go. Now don't forget this is in the distance. We can add lighter values, atmosphere values to this if we want to get it that little bit duller. So there I will. I'm just going to lock it in. Now there's no detail in this like the, see the top of the trees I've got there? They're quite furry, they're not sharp, they're not in focus because they're quite a ways away. And I'm just going to blurringly detail the edge of that just so it looks pleasing to the eye. I'm grabbing some white with what's already in my brush. I'll start at the top and I want to just hit the top and scratch it down a bit and kind of bring some um, dimensional vibes within this landmass. There we go. Let me have a look in my lens there. See that is looking better already. I'm happy with that. I'm... It's a silly weird way to 
probably do some distance out there, but it's working for the painting. Get the vibe of this against the vibe of the sky. It's looking crackingly hot. I like it. And if you like it, give me a comment below. Grabbing, I've washed my brush, grabbing some of the forest green. Just so we can get something a bit in front of what's on that. Now don't get carried away. If I've gone a step further that you're not capable of doing, stop at the level where you're capable of being comfortable. I'm just putting distant detail here. That's all I'm doing. And you can see the yellow here, I've got cadmium yellow, and I'm gonna grab some of the forest green and make a beautiful lawn. I love putting lawn at some of my mountains, hills and whatnot. Just right against the waterline here. Now it's not dry, I coulda, woulda, shoulda dried it. So I've dried it, grabbing me bullshit stick. And we'll get that lawn there. Watch this. Now I'm going a bit scallopy, like thin and thick here and there. It's not just one even straight line, okay? Right at the bottom of the water there. There we go. Now I've just danced the tip of that brush into the slightest white because right against the water now, I'm just gonna stamp it on. This is just detailed distance. I don't even know why I'm doing this, but I'm sure there's a few of you out there that want this sort of caper in your paintings. I'm keeping my paints wet as I go because I've got to come back to them to put them into the water reflection. Now, we're going to grab a filbert brush. We're simply going to grab our forest green again and we'll map in the next section. You need it at reasonably inky so it's going to transfer off your brush onto your canvas if you're not aware of that. And this, remember how I had something about here? About there and it's going to come to about here. So I'm gonna get the base roughly where I want it, about there. And start stamping this into the painting. So I've got one line there, pretty much coming, when I get the other colors you'll see, coming in front of this one. And this one is a bit lower again, down there somewhere, just breaking up the horizon line. Now I'm picking up my filbert, I've dampened it and getting it to where I want now. So I want some, I don't know, some trees here. Leaving that stuff in the background there, try not to cover it all up. Now start leaving some sky in there as well. It's good to have sky windows within your work, otherwise it looks like something was just blobbed on your painting. got some sky windows in there just now while that's drying I'm grabbing this paint here on my flat and I want to simply come along to the height of that get it in there using it left and right leave that bit of lawn that I put there come along to there now try and find the height where are we and while I'm using the flat I can get the ripply distorted edge there. Instead of just pulling it down like a real early beginner would, you can progress and evolve within your painting journey and do it this way. It's just a lot nicer. And this can be, start becoming darker as well because it is a reflection. It's deep and dark out there. I'll put it there 
and then that one's reflection can go over it. Leaving some watercolours here so they're like splicing together, it creates the ripply line on the surface of the water. Everything's had a bit of a dry. Where these darker areas are, simply want to grab the darker forest green. I've grabbed a smaller brush and just pull them down like that. That's it. Where's some here about there? Pull them in a nice straight line. Bit here. That's why I put those darker detailed elements in the distance, just so as I can have this happening in the reflection. Grabbing the flats and the forest green and the cadmium yellow, I'm getting a lighter lawn version made up again for that mid ground. And I want to come sweeping from the edge here, get some of it here. Just put on. This is the actual flat ground that the trees are laying on, so it's scattered, zigzagged in there to create depth from the trees down into there. I'm getting a bit more yellow because that's still greeny green. I'm making it more yellow green, and I want to get I'll start from here. That's it, look at that. We've got some light hitting it. Like golf course green, I suppose. There we go. And give it a dry. Everything, this sort of detailing stuff can be dried so it's not gonna mud up on you when you're trying to add your different colors. It's important you do this, I've got some Burn Umber mixed with a little bit of black just to blackulate it because see this here it needs the darkness of the dirt, the bank, whatever there. Come along like that and we can sort of stop somewhere about here. And you can see how that's sat it down. It looks realistically reasonable. Now I've got some Australian Sienna and I'm mixing with the forest green here. If you don't have Australian Sienna, just you can use a ochre, yellow ochre, just to get this dead old tree leaf color. And we want some of this. I'm just gonna work on maybe one side of it here. bringing it down into my ground there, the lawn that I put there. This is just another realism looking colour you can put in your trees. I just turned the light up on the camera there, it's a bit dark in here. Even the dark so. Putting these dead wood colours in your trees, it just gives it that sense of realism. It's like adding the yumminess to clouds. Just where bits of light's getting hit. This is background stuff. But it's just making you see that colour. Now I'm simply going to pull out some sap green with some cadmium yellow. I've got yellow green there in a tube but I'll mix this up. It's a different vibe to the forest green okay and we'll just simply highlight some of those trees that we put in there, give it a little bit of water and now we'll put our trees in. This is the actual tree Those brown ones are at the back. I 
leaving the dark green that we've got there as well. This is just simple filbert brush strokes. Now grab your flat brush again and it will start putting that reflection in the water simply by grabbing the forest green first. Where's the forest green? Pretty much all here now. So we're going to start getting this. Where are we about there? Pulling it down, getting it on there and pulling it down. So leave that bit of dark browny black colour there and this is covering up. Get it to the height, pull it down, get it on, stamp it on like this. See how that's towards the edge there, stamp it on and pull it downwards. And then all this will be thick. because this is the edge of the reflection where I'm coming to now, just here, I'm going to get the flat brush and start scalloping it again like I did out there. There we go. So I've picked up the dead wood colour and I'm simply going to find it and pull it down. I'm using a smaller brush now to control that vibe. Okay, now we'll grab the other colour and um, pull down. I have given it a dry and the other colour was the sap green with the yellow, cat yellow in it and I want to just Try not to kill it with all this, because this is very loud colour. And try and keep them, how's that looking? Straight, that'll do, that'll do it. Not going for a Nobel Prize here, so. Oh, my glove's clapping, can you hear it? Let's be a bit cheeky, that black and some of the burnt umber there. Let's grab some of that on me little dagger brush. Grab your mouth stick and see this lawn that we put here. What we're gonna do now is work out some tree trunks. So let's just, nice skinny one. Oh, that's a bit fat, Ian. Put him in the lawn like that, that's too fat. I've gotta take some of that paint off me brush. Boom, and these set back will create the distance within your painting. That's better. That's so thick, that one. On the lawn, back in the lawn, up in the woods there. Now what you can do, I just thought of it, I just thought of it. I'm going to grab some white and grey that up a bit. Let's give it some kind of, um, I don't know, connect it to the ground with some shadows. Is that looking okay? Yeah. We can put some shadows on the ground there just to give it another sense of realism. How's that all right, or have I buggered it? That'll do, we've just got some shadowing there. All right, now we're putting our other element in this painting here, which is another tree, it's quite high. I've just got perylene green, 
I'll put a little bit of um, cad yellow with it just to kind of turn the lights on with it. And I want to try and get this coming down here so you'll get a vibe of what I'm doing. In front of that, pushing that back, yeah, that's made it darker because apparently the closer things are, they've got more red in them. Oh, golly, get off there. Now I'm bringing this down to here, just to there. So I've got one tree kind of here, keeping the sky windows in it. And then another one, round about here. And these trees that I'm painting, these are a filbert tree, because I'm painting them with a filbert brush. All this white bit will be solid now. Get it dark there. Now you simply want to replicate that on the bottom of your painting as well. Oh, I didn't bring that over enough, did I? So get it to the hot. There's one there. Get him on. And this one's coming down about there. So now we can get this darker. There we go, look at that, it's sitting on there. Now I'll grab the, um, this, and I wanna get the edge of it, scallopy. I call it scallopy, it's just these wiggly lines that create the um, surface of the water within your reflections. Now I've got the forest green, grabbing the brush I created that tree with. On the right hand side of it, I want to highlight it, leaving the dark there, leaving pockets of dark there as well. I'm pushing those background trees back with all this colour. Simply grab that and pull it down, it's a bit wet. Get it straight. I want to sit in front of that one. That's why I left the left hand side of that first tree darker. So as this will sit in front of it and make it look like it's in front of it. The way they're just sitting on the ground there. I've given it a dry and that black colour, i will even got some of that brown in it, that black I had with some of the burnt umber, I'm going to put a mountain of stones here like so they'll just sort of come down in front of that, in front of that and these are coming out there lock it in there ish now I want to grab my little scrumbling brush and the forest green with some yellow just before I finish those stones off just so as I can get a little conifer type uh, happening there so I'm just getting the paint, that's it, that'll do. I just want something a bit bright there and then pull down into the water. Now I've got my grey, my mid-tone grey. Get a bit of, hopefully got enough. And we want to darken it because that's a bit too bright because we want to slowly come brighter. 
with our stones. They're going to be grey stones. It's just a pile of grey stones next to the river or the lake or whatever. And now we'll start getting... Get rid of that black edge. Don't ever leave that there. They look weird when you've got the black edge. I'm just destroying that black edge first. Okay, I've got that reasonably destroyed. And we're gonna get this just filled up with boulders, stones and rocks. I'll get some of this just, just pulled down like so. Now we'll get some darker grey into that again. Not quite getting there yet. We'll build it up, we'll build it up. So then we'll get some in between all of this. Get some of that in there. Have a look at it, I'm looking at it. The dark colour, I'm just picking up the black in the brush, I haven't washed it. Um, where it's meeting the water, I want dark bits jostling up through there and coming down as well. And just scatter some darker bits within this, just so as we can highlight it appropriately and she'll look quite okay. That's the water line there. I'm just fingering it up through there and put some of this value down there as well. I have put the slightest bit of darkness on this conifer shrub there as well where it's meeting the water just to give it that sit down look. Get out brighter bits in there now. Come off the painting and run into it. Don't stop at the edge of your painting. Now just to finish it off, I've got some of the cerulean blue mixed with the grey, just so it's not so dark, stark. And you'll see what this does, it kind of adds the real, see how we've got kind of real colours within our sky and our deadwood tree colours. Hopefully this is going to do the same with these stones. I've even added a little bit of magenta in there, you might be able to tell. I'm just trying to sit it down on the water a little bit better. Just down here I've got some titanium white and I've put the littlest bit of blue in there because I want it to be white looking but I want it tainted with the blue so I can actually highlight it with pure white. And see that sun that we put there? Let's use our bullshit stick. Where are we? There he is there. Oh, hopefully you can see that. There's the bullshit stick. We're gonna come from there. I'll come down and I'll fade away about there. Okay, there's me line. I've got to work by, just so as we can use this now and get some shimmer over our water.
And as you come down to the base, it's pretty much more gappy and opened and Now I can grab the pure white and just nice and sharply sit on top of that bluey white. You want your brush chisel to a fine point. So what I'm trying to do here to get these as sharp as possible. to finish it off if you really want to. Find some of the long ones and just put some sparkles on them. Just at the foreground here somewhere. Now that movement on the water, I want some of it here because see how this is not sitting down? This green, I want the green, where are we? We want some of the green, let's find some of it and mix it with a white. So I'll grab some white. You want it really white, but just greeny white. And we can use our bullshit stick here. And I want to come. And get wind on the top of our water here. turn into little dots. And then I want a nice big bunch of it here somewhere. just what that does to your water. Just grabbing the pale blue now, this sort of blue here, with, with white in it, and putting some ripples over this darker area as well, just like that. I was gonna put some rocks in the front, but I've changed my mind. It does look a bit empty here, so I'll put some what do you call it? A group of lilies. So I'm just using um, black paint. Getting some small ones, some big ones, some medium ones. Making like sausage shapes within the water. Okay, simply dry that. And right on the top of them, I've got my yellow green mix. You want to cover the actual top. Don't worry, you, you, you're going to see the dark underneath. You need to cover the top of that dark area in. And where they're grouped together, this is where you can sit ones in front. Like this one's in front of those ones there. If you've got the dark at the top of it, it's just not going to look right. Get a bit of that magenta, you had some of that I suppose. Maybe a bit of white with it just to opaque, there we go, not too much. Put a little bit of black with that maybe. Oh, yeah that'll do. Give them something in the middle. 
Now, I could have, would have, should have dried it. But I'm in a damn hurry here to try and finish this film. There's something in the middle. Oh yeah, look at that, just the big ones. Then to give them their reflection, simply put a stalk on them, on an angle, like that. And then that can be tasseled down into the water, like that. So, how's that looking? Yeah, that's all right. Get some, I'll get one right over here. And he can come down there. One straight up and down. I'm just going to sign this painting and then I'll whack a frame on it. Be sure to share, like and subscribe. Give me a comment in the comments below. Ask me a question or just simply say hello. Tell me where you're from. All right. There we go. That's not too shabby. We've got a sunlit swamp or a lake or a water scene. And with a bit of practice, I know you can do it. Well, I had a lot of fun painting that. I hope you enjoyed this show. Be sure to give me the thumbs up. And just remember, if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends. But if you don't, you tell everybody. Also, have a look at this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.